someone could advance that manually. I don't know if it's the... Okay, thank you. God is changing lives all across Mexico. This is just a quick snapshot of people that we have interacted with over the last uh, couple of years. This is where we live, Mexico City. As Pecos would say, it's a little village. <laughs> it's, uh, it's rather large. Actually, the metropolis of Mexico City is over, it covers over 800 square feet, I mean, square feet, square miles, and um, over a population of over 25 million people. That comes out to be a density, a population density of between 16 to 25,000 people per square mile. So we're piled on top of each other there, uh, but we don't see them all on the same day, so it's okay. Our home and our hearts are, are in Mexico and with her people. Pecos is from there, and I'm a Kansas girl, but um, I just, I love Mexico. I've been there 40, almost 41 years this, this fall. We've been missionaries since 1978. We went with one small boy, you know, six months old, and our second son, Sean, or Anthony, was born in Mexico. So Sean and Anthony uh, grew up in Mexico, and um, we've been there ever since. They came to the States, and they are uh, for college, and uh, they're back here now. Uh, we've been church planters. Uh, the first 22 years, we planted churches in Mexico City and uh, a village outside of Mexico City. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anybody that might know the guy on Pecos is to the left. That's Rick Wright. Oh, thank you. So anyway, that's what our kids looked like in the in the in the 80s. The Iglesia Cristiana del Sur was the last church plant that we did. And um, this is what the church looked like back in the year 2000. And um, the next year, Pecos and I began a marriage ministry in Mexico. And so we began that in 2001, and we're still going strong in 2019. And we thank God for that. Um, this was a couple that Pecos did the ceremony. And actually, there were nine couples that were married that day. It was a wonderful celebration. So this gives you just a, a shot of how how we travel across Mexico, many different spots, and these aren't all of them, it's not inclusive, but that gives you an idea of how we've traveled across the, the country doing our ministry. Our ministry involves teaching uh, couples God's principles for Christ-centered marriages and families, and how we go about that to accomplish these goals is through leadership training, personal counseling, conferences, retreats, discipleship, and evangelism. Two years ago in the fall, we, Pecos and I came to Dallas, Texas uh, to do go through their certification course for a, a, a course called Marriage on the Rock, singular, The Rock. And um, we are using that same material now in our leadership training courses that we are giving. So we want to train up uh, couples to be able to take this ministry to their local churches, uh, leadership. Um, th so this is our first group. Of, of graduates that was in the spring of, of last year and in the fall of last year this is the other uh, group that we also trained up for this ministry so we are trying to reproduce ourselves as we all should do in in the ministry and uh, we also had a wonderful experience of being um, having our conferences filmed and uh, and it's now on YouTube so if any any of you want to go on YouTube if you speak Spanish, you can see our, our 10 of our classes in Spanish. So that was a, a, a great plus for our ministry. So we go around the country. We do marriage courses as well, um, giving classes in different churches throughout the, the country. We also have uh, gone to the Mexican uh, National Convention of Christian Churches. We did a workshop there for three days with about 300 people. That was great. We also do marriage, a lot of marriage counseling. This particular uh, couple, we counsel, they are from Mexico, but they now live in New Zealand. And so we Skype with them uh, every, every so often so we can go through um, our marriage um, classes with them and also just some online counseling. But it's, it's great because modern technology can link us anywhere in the world. We also use our marriage counseling as evangelism, an evangelism tool. Everyone that comes to us for counseling, we're right up front with them. We say we're going to use the Bible as our basis for our counseling. And if you are okay with that, then we, we continue on. And we, we, um, so that is a way of also reaching others for Christ through our, our uh, marriage counseling. We're investing in families. Families are the basis of our um, society, and the enemy is attacking the families, and we all well know that. So this is a, a passion of ours to invest in, in the lives of couples and the lives of families. This um, couple, we just 
just in in uh, April, um, I had the privilege of baptizing this this young wife and mother. Her name's Lorena. So we we just celebrate the new beginnings that God is happening is is uh, bringing about throughout uh, Mexico and uh, not just in Mexico but in other places as well. Uh, we do family retreats. And we also do marriage retreats. So this was a, the last couples retreat that we did was April of this year. And it was a, a, a wonderful time. Also of reaching those that are not in Christ yet. There were couple, two couples that really uh, had not uh, ever listened to the gospel. So we're just thankful that um, we are able to plant seeds. We're able, you all that are agricultural um, uh, community, you understand the planting. You have to plow, plant, fertilize pray for rain, and sometimes say, okay, that's enough, God, <laughs> and then uh, bring <laughs> some next week, And uh, but the harvest is the Lord's, and so we just th are thankful that we're, be able, we're able to see uh, the, the fruit that comes from our ministry. We've also recently, in the last three years, been able to go to a retreat. We've been asked to speak at a, a couple's retreat in Dallas, Texas, with a Hispanic group, and it's been a, a great blessing as well. So we go all over the place, and we just want to thank you. You have been one of our first, you are one of the first supporting churches for this ministry and you've sustained us over the years and we thank you very much. We're very thankful for your support and for your partnership. So um, this is this verse really speaks our heart uh, about you. So I thank my God every time I think of you, uh, all of my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, Philippians 1, 3 through 5. Thank you very much. And now Pecos will bring the word. I'm getting old. As you know, but uh, <clears throat> I thank you so much for Sublate Christian Church for so many years of uh, helping us out. And you send us with seeds. You understand about the seeds. And we are coming back with fruit. I mean, we're talking with mangoes, papayas, pineapples, you name it. And 40 years in the field, you know, I say, is this ministry worth it? It is sending somebody to the field worth it to, to be invest. We are an investment of you because you guys are the ones that send the people. We are the goers. And with what can you come back, you know? But our ministry is people, you know, because, and that is what is our call as Christians. Do I change? Or I, which one is the right side? Great technology. Thank you. Matthew 28, 18, and 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples. Watch this. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And teach them to what? Obey. That is the part that is kind of difficult for people. To obey. And he doesn't say a little things. Everything that I have command you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And God has been with us. Jesus sent us to make disciples. That's our call. And we have enjoyed from the very beginning. Now I return to my own people. I am from Mexico City. I am an Aztec, Indian, Spanish. My last name is in Chaustegui. Very Spanish, Basque, very rare last name. But I have the call from the very beginning that I met the Lord. And I, let me tell you, if you don't know me, I came as an exchange student 
<clears throat> to a, a, a town in, in by our Kansas City and Winfield. The name of the, of the town is Dexter, Kansas. The only thing that they have over there is a candy store and two lights, stop lights or whatever. But in, in at night, they have only two bolts, you know, two lights. And I say, are you kidding? Am I going to live in, the, in this little town? No, they took me 10 miles more to a farm. I have never been in my life in a farm. But every Sunday, as you remember in 1972, 73, when you used to come to church, how did you come up? My gosh, you dress up. Some of the cowboys here, they have their hats over there. The, the, the ladies, they were just completely dressed up incredibly. The guys there were with their hats. I mean, with the hats, with their coats and everything, you know. Now you come to church in shorts. I won't allow this in my church. I'm sorry. No kidding. Because we are to be with the King of Kings and with the Lord of the Lord, Lord of Lords. And, and that's how I went to church. But, you know, I said to them, when, when I saw dressing up for Sunday morning, I say, where are you going? There is nothing here. We are going to church. And the church was about 10 miles from, the, from, from that. And I say, I'm not going with you. Because you are Protestant. I'm a Catholic. All the Mexicans are Catholic. They don't know why. But they tell us you are Catholic. So I say, and she said to me, and that's one thing that I want you to learn this. Whoever is in your house, whoever is in your house, you are the one that is going to determine what that person lives in your house, what they're going to do. Amen? So I say, I'm not going with you because you, I don't like to go to the church. And she say, listen, Pecos, there is one rule in this house. You don't come to the, the church now with us. You don't eat in this house. <laughs> Amen? Now you have to beg the people, your own children, to come to church. Would you like to go to church? Get up and go with us. You don't go to eat here if you don't go with us. You are in my house. You are in my house. And I love that lady and that man that say, yeah, we are waiting for you. We'll give you five minutes. In three minutes, I was ready. She was a good cook. As you can tell. But I went there and I hear the gospel. I couldn't understand when they were singing because I didn't speak English. But I like the fellowship. I like the people. I like, to, you know, what happened there. And then <clears throat> in my birthday in February 19, I have in my Bible, 1972, she gave me a Bible in my own language in Spanish. And I was for the first time at the age of 19 years old, I start reading the Bible. And when you don't know anything about the Bible, and you start reading it, it's the most incredible stories ever. You know, from the very beginning. And then, you know, I started reading about Moses and, and all of these guys, you know. Man, I said, that's wonderful, you know. And then, but then, but when I came to Jesus, I said, this is something else. He's the son of God. And then I accept the Lord. And when I accept the Lord, you know, I felt the call. But never forget that I felt the call when I was raising up from the water. And he says, Pecos, I want you to go to a Bible college to finish and to return to Mexico. Okay? And I did that. The Lord guided me, helped me, directed me. And I was working at Manhattan Christian College. I went to Manhattan Christian College for five years. And I finished, that's where I met Linda. And I told my, uh, Linda, when we were boyfriend and girlfriend, you know what? I'm going back to Mexico. Because I have a call 
And I wonder if you have the same call that I have. Because I don't want a girl that goes with me and then I miss my mother, my family. You going to go or you don't want to go? Yes or no? She said yes. Yesterday we just celebrate our 44 years of marriage with two boys, 41 and 39. And God has blessed us all the way. All the way. Never to be afraid. Because I am the Lord and we will be, be with you wherever you go. Never to be afraid. Therefore, make disciples. Our commission was to make disciples. You know, sometimes in missions they confuse, you know, the deal of building a little house in the middle of the desert. And, and I praise God that there is so many people that goes and go and I say, are these guys disciples that you are building? Their little house? Or are you going to, you know, the, there is missions of all kinds. Well, the call is to make disciples, amen? I don't see any other call. And I say, you know, my job is people. That's why I went to the biggest city in the world. But how do you may meet with people? Talking with people. Talking with your neighbors. You have to start one by one. And, and one by one you have to be, they have to see you if you are really a Christian or you don't. You have to get involved. The best, your best friend is your neighbor. Your best friend is your neighbor because he's there all the time. He's going to tell you what happened in your house and you live and you tell him, you know, I'm leaving. Take care of my house. Now you say, besides taking care of the house, you say, take care of the dog or the stinking cat and everything. You know, because now you are, you are more involved in these little things, you know, that, that, that what is to be a neighbor. We have a lot of neighbors in Mexico. I mean, everywhere that you turn around, but everything that we use the opportunity is to share the gospel with them. And we are like, like uh, imanes, what do you say, Javis? Uh, like magnets to people. Because we're not afraid to share the gospel and tell them what we do. And sometimes, uh, where, where, where do you give you these classes? Where, where are you talking about these things? And we give them the others. And suddenly they came to the church. They came to these things. And then we involve, but you have to go one by one. You can have a big groups, you know. And, it's, and we do it also, but you want to go one by one with these couples that we share the gospel. What is our call? To preach the word. And to be disciple makers. We love it. I mean, this is our passion. In 19, last year, we have a big earthquake in Mexico City and the surrounding areas. And, and there is a lot of people <clears throat> that want us to help us. And we took some Americans that came out to help these churches that they fall down and things like this, you know. But the message that we say is not just to build the church and I say, where is the people from this church? Let them, we, we, I, with the Americans that they come, we want the people to help us too. Amen. I'm not going to do it just for you. Bring them over here. So they start coming up. The church members, because the whole thing falls down. I say, you know, we want to give you the people that came. They say, they're going to give you money for to, to start building up. What I say to everybody over there, these guys, they come to help you for the building. But what they want to see is disciples. These people that accept the Lord. Where are you going to have the baptistry? Amen? Where is going to be? In every place that I have been, in a house that we build, we have a baptistry. You know, because you accept the Lord as, as your Lord and Savior, do you want to be baptized? Okay, here we go. 
and the water is cold. You know, but that's what we do. I love this verse. That's my second calling. In 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, that's what I say there's Paul sending uh, <clears throat> Timothy to make disciples. And he said to this, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. I have another version that I learned very much. To entrust the gospel of Jesus Christ to faithful men. That these faithful men will be able to teach others also. That is our call. To try to find in a church that we go and we go all over Mexico. Here now, they are invited us in Latino churches in the United States. You know, and we go to say, who are the faithful men? And we can detect, you know, we can see who they are. And we told them, as a preacher, who's these guys? I mean, is these guys really mean business? Yeah, okay, we're going to talk with them. To entrust the gospel of Jesus Christ to faithful men and women that they will be able to teach others also. How many you have been teaching? You just cannot just hear the gospel all the time. They say that the American churches, they are sick of the stomach by listening too much and don't doing nothing. You have to find one person. That's what I like navigators. You know, there is a, uh, something about these guys. They don't have churches. But my guys, they have disciples. They have disciples. I want to be a disciple. No disciples of Christ church, you know. No. Christian church. You know what I mean. But what I'm saying, I want to I want to make disciples. I don't want to build churches. I mean and I can and I help and I do and it is my call is to make disciples. Our call is to make disciples. Linda has a gift with a woman. Number one, because she's very pretty and she speaks Spanish. Everybody, every time that we go to a different villages and things like this, when she started speaking Spanish, they say, how this gringa speaks better Spanish than, I, than we do. And she does. You know? Because it's in your heart, because you want it to be there. Now, what is happening in the mission field is that we find out that many missionaries that go to Mexico, the most that they stay is three years. Five years is the most that they're giving to the Lord in the mission field. They want to have that in, in their curriculum when they come back to the States. Oh, I was a missionary for three years. Big deal. Do you speak Spanish? No. And those are their five years. That's, that's how long it takes you to really get a taste of the, of the country and to the taste of the people, and they start to knowing you, you have to spend time. In a church, in order to grow, they have to see you in all your facets, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And they have to, you have to continue going. And then I tell you what, people, you know, one of the things that they, my, my friends in Mexico, my family say, when I got married with Linda, I received, after three years that we lived with Mary in, in, in Kansas, I went and I got my green car. You guys don't understand what is this green car. The green car is like, is like a, a passport, and in the green car it says in the back, this person can live and work in the United States. And I said, do you have any problems with that when I cross the border? I cross the border, I go in by plane, and I have my green car. And I can cross back and forth with no problem. And the Mexicans, you know, my family, my friends say, how in the world you return to Mexico with a green car? Are you crazy? 
Why don't you stay and work over there? And I have all the kind of chances to go to churches in Dallas, Los Angeles, that speak Spanish. I have a lot of chance, but no, I have a call to return to my people. I have a call. A God has blessing good news to Mexico. Marriage encouragement. And he has blessed us for 44 years of commitment. I am not bagging everything. This is my life. This is what we do and we love it. And the things that I, you have heard from me among many witnesses commit to this, to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Being disciple maker is our passion, our passion. I mean, we do it with passion. You can tell with somebody who's just, you know, reading or, or, or saying, but if he doesn't leave it, you can tell what is going on. You can fake it very well. But if somebody is with passion about Christ, you want to be a part of that guy or that ministry or that people or that family. Because it's your passion. Because someday, like, like Lynn and I, we're going to give an account of what we have done. We are giving an account of what we have done to your churches that support us. That you say, why in the world are we helping this guy, you know, this fat boy from Mexico for 41 years? We're wasting our money. I'm telling you, you are not wasting anything. We mean business. And I hope that you can check us out in Mexico. Somebody called me from a church, Pecos. Let me drink my Mexican waters to get more inspired. I'm in I say, <clears throat> what I say? You know, Alzheimer's. It says, that's why I brought my wife. <laughs> Pecos. We have a problem with some missionaries that they don't report. And some of them, they don't report for two years. What can we do? Do not send any money to that stinking dogs anymore. <laughs> and if they don't send you any reports, no more. One of your obligations as a church is to have in the budget of the missions to see who is your missionaries and go and check them out personally. Because I can bring you all these beautiful pictures and everything I see. But the important thing is not the building. The important thing is not the orphanage. The important thing is not the houses. The important thing is the, where is the disciples? And I tell you one thing, man, when you go to a house where there is disciples, you can tell because we have the same what? The Spirit of God. And when they sing and when they preach, and when they are big with you, and somebody is translating, but you understand what they are saying. And then they send me back in two months and say, hey, these missionaries start to report. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that is your obligation, yes or no? Obligation as a mission, you know, as a church. Who are the guys that we are supporting? You know, what, what are they doing? And some, sometimes, you know, I tell you one thing, those that have been in Mexico, in, you know, or in any place in the world, they come back with another attitude about missions. I don't want you to raise your hand, but there is many of you guys that they have never crossed the border of Mexico, or they have been dry, not, dry, not even flying or anything to other place in the world for a mission trip, or just for a visit. Maybe even you, if you go in a cruise, you know, you are in the water, and maybe you get out of the island, but in that island, or wherever they go, they, they show you a nice place. But when you go to a mission, with a missionary, and you walk with him, and you sweat with him, and you eat, and I say to those people that go, I'm telling you one thing, 
When you go and they give you something to eat, you better eat it. I don't care if you're going to die. <laughs> but you better eat it because they are giving you the very best. The very best. And we have a lot of peptabismo after, after a while. <laughs> and we have a lot of mocktail. You have the biggest problem. But what I'm saying, they love you because you are visiting them. And that's the people that we are discipling. And you become literally one in Christ. We can have brothers and sisters from all over the world because we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And that's the important thing. Second Timothy 4.2 Preach the word. Amen? Not talk about the word. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Now, no many people like this. Correct. I was, my dad was a military person. And when he said, come, you come. When he said, run, you run. When he said, jump, you jump. With no hesitation. Because you know what will happen? He will discipline me. When he said, when you are eating, close your mouth. You look like a pig eating. I close my mouth. Close my mouth. I'm telling you, whatever he say, Linda's dad also is a military. Now, he just retired from the National Guard. He's 82 years old, but he was a colonel, you say, colonel of the National Guard in Kansas, in the whole state of Kansas, Colonel Wayne Klein. And every time that I come to the United States and I see Linda's dad in Topeka, I just go like this, sir! And until he say, I put my hand down because I respect that man. As I respect Jesus, my Lord. Amen? You have to respect the older people. Preach the word. Preparing season and out season. Correct. Rebuke. What does that mean? I don't think it's even in the dictionary anymore. We don't even know what it is to rebuke. Because you cannot say nothing to the people in the pulpit. They will fire you. You cannot say nothing about anything because maybe they don't come. Rebuke. You know, rebuke. And encourage, of course. We are a marriage encouragement. That's our, uh, we encourage people. And we talk to them and say, you know, don't live in sin. That word doesn't even exist anymore. Sin. You know what is sin? That's what you are doing. If you are a Christian, don't sin. God wants to bless you. Get married. You have living in sin. You have children in sin. Well, God wants to bless you, man. Go do it. And that is what we encourage them. How we can do it? Well, this is what the Bible says. This is what you can help. But we have problems with even with our own children. Telling them. And we encourage our children. And we help our children. And we understand. But now, if she, if she gets mad or he gets mad, let's get a divorce. I mean, there is 50% of the people in Mexico get a divorce. And the average here is even worse. And they are also living together like nothing. And they come to church. And the preachers don't tell them anything. And they're singing. And they're playing. Not for you guys, okay? You know, you know, it's just an example. But they're singing because they sing really nice. Who cares? They play very nice. Or they give a lot of money. So what? 
We have to tell why, what is white and black, what is black, but I am brown and I got to tell you what it is. And the same thing, and you can, maybe you don't like it, but that is the word of God. And now you're not afraid to tell it like it is because that's what he told me to say. To correct, to rebuke, and to encourage. Now, with great patience and careful instruction. That's why I bring my wife. She has all the patience and the careful instruction. And she just, you know, she's the one that say, take it easy, boy, take it easy, you know. You know, because I am a, a in, in Spanish, pastor is a shepherd. The one that is taking care of the, what? The sheep, you know. But I am a German shepherd. Right? I'm in business, man. You know, I am not a little stinking chihuahua. I am a Rottweiler or a German shepherd. I'm in business. Amen? That's what God wants us to be. Don't be afraid of anything. I will be with you wherever you go. If I die, I go with the Lord. If I live, I continue preaching until the end. Now they say that I'm too old to preach. I'm 68. And I say these big churches, you know, that they're supporting us. You are old because. Really? You have been in the mission field too many years. Really? What is your call, I say to the to, to that missionary that they have well to that committee that they never have get her out of, or, or anywhere. I said, well, what you have to, show me one man that you have been talking about. Show me one man that you have been into the Lord. Show me one. I'm telling you, I can show you many. And I'm not stinking all of anything. I feel I feel good. And you guys treat me like king. Over here, when we were eating over here, my gosh, I take pictures of these steaks. I take pictures of all this food that they are giving me. And I say, man, the, the Mexicans say, you want to miss the Mexican food? Are you crazy? I'm not. And I will never miss Mexico or any place when I go because I will be preaching the word of God, sharing with people for what we do. Sometimes I'm not very careful. Because I tell it like it is. And I love it. Because this is who I am. That's why I marry Linda, because she's the one that is careful, the one that is patient, and the one that is, gives me, to me, great instruction. And has helped me. And we're a team. It's not just me. What is your call? And it's wonderful that you guys come every Sunday or whatever you do, or you hear messages in the television and things like this. But what is your call? And, and it's not just to me, because that was the last words that Jesus says. Before he went to heaven, he said, go therefore and make disciples unto all nations unto all nations. And that's what, when the United States is the sending power to all over the world in missions. You guys are a givers. You have a, a, a blessing. The Christians that give, they, have, they are a blessing to all the world. The churches in the United States are the ones that they send missionaries, more missionaries, and more everything that you can to the world. Because God, believe me, has blessed America. Amen. You are blessed. Maybe you complain a, a lot because it rained a lot. Because, oh my, I cannot go to the field. Yes. Well, didn't you want water? But it's too much. Because sometimes we are not happy for what the Lord gives you. Be glad that you don't have a tornado 
Amen. Then you don't have nothing. Right? You know, I think it's the first time in Lawrence, Kansas, there has been a tornado with a kilometer or a mile wide. Linda's sister lives about half a mile where that tornado passed by. All Lawrence. And he went through, he didn't go through the city of Lawrence. You know, I am a wildcat. And I say, Lord, take care of the Jayhawks. <laughs> he said, no. He went over there. But, you know, now I have a, a something in, the, in, my, in my telephone that it tells you, you guys are incredible. When the showers are going to start. If it's a green, it's going to rain. It is yellow, it's coming hard. If it's red, watch out. If it's blue, you better move. Don't wait. Get to the other side. Run. Because you can do nothing about it. Amen? You have an advantage. Great advantage. You have this, uh, what's up, what is it? The weather channel. In Mexico, we don't have an advantage. We have earthquakes. That means that we don't know ne never when, how, what time, what year, or whatever. The earth starts moving. And we pray, but we get out of the place. Because if you, this thing will fall down, and things like this. In the ocean, the hurricane, the hurricane is coming. It's coming from Cuba. It's coming from the Gulf of Mexico. It's coming from the Pacific. But you know that it's coming. In an earthquake, you don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know when it's going to happen. But I want to be ready every time to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because he's worthy. What is your, our call, not just your call, to serve him until you die? And there is no stops. There is nothing. If God gives you the, 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 the plan, if God gives you the fortune to be rich and start giving to people, not just because you are giving, choose to who you give. Choose to who you give. Are they making it or they are not? Are they making disciples? Or they are not making disciples? Our goal is to make disciples. Thank you so much for sending us to Mexico. And I believe that we are worth it. Amen. God bless you.